just took a potato chip out of the um, drain pile because I can't wait until they're all done before I try this barbecue seasoning for this coating. Can you see that? That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. Hey guys, Victoria from amodernhomestead.com here and today I am making homemade potato chips. We're going to make plain potato chips and barbecue potato chips where we make our own barbecue seasoning and it is so, so good. You're going to love it. I can't wait to share it with you. So really this is a very simple process. You need potatoes and you need a frying oil. We use coconut oil, but you can also use lard or tallow or palm oil or vegetable oil or whatever you would like to use peanut oil. For us, we use coconut oil. It has a great mild taste and um, it's a good healthy fat. So we're going to get started. First, we're going to peel all these potatoes. So this is five pounds of potatoes peeled and rinsed. So they are ready to slice in our mandolin. Uh, while that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and take my heavy bottom, heavy, heavy bottom saucepan and fill it with coconut oil. I'm not gonna fill it. I'm just gonna use uh, one quart and one and a half pint, which is 56 fluid ounces or 1.6 liters. So um, this actually got accidentally left in the car overnight. So it's nice and liquidy, but normally I'd have to scoop this out with a spoon. Um, so we're just gonna pour it in here and let it heat on uh, medium while we slice our potatoes. Because I know that I'm gonna be um, frying a lot of potato chips, I'm going to go ahead and use this whole container. If you're just doing a small amount of potato chips, you just want to try like a pound or something, use a medium sized saucepan with a lot less coconut oil. You want a couple inches basically of coconut oil in the pan. Get that in there and let that melt. And then we'll get to frying. So while that's heating, we're gonna slice. And I have this mandolin that I really, really love. It is a De Beyer, I think, uh, mandolin made in France. And I've had it for, let's see, 13 years. And it is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, it does a really thin slice, very, very sharp knife. It also has a, um, like a waffle um, blade. Sure it has like the straight side, but then it also has the serrated side. So you can do um, waffle fries or anything like that with their waffle chips. Really cool. Um, we're just gonna use the straight side because we're making regular potato chips. And sometimes it does take a few slices to get your thickness right. And so you want these to be, I mean, we like really thin crispy potato chips. You may like more thick cut potato chips. That's up to you. But I'm gonna do a couple slices. And just see yeah they will get a little thinner Let's see I can... they will get thinner as they cook um, and so I think that's that's gonna be good I would say that's like an eighth of an inch um, and so what I'd like to do is just go ahead and use my hand for this until it gets down to be about three inches and then we'll go ahead and use this protective um, slicing tool uh, so that you don't cut your hand. Okay, so we're just going to go through these five pounds of potatoes. All right, now let's go fry some. All right, so we're going to put these in and we're going to drop them in one at a time and that may seem tedious, but doing so keeps them from sticking together. I forgot to do that on the first batch and they stuck together like crazy. So just drop them in one at a time. You can do a couple of cups at a time depending on how much oil you have. And then you'll leave them like that for a couple of minutes and stir them in about two or three minutes. I'm going to flip them around so that the tops also fry. And then you'll start watching the color. You don't want them to be super dark. This batch got a little dark. Um, because even if they're not finished all the way through, we can pop them in the oven for a little bit on like 200 and finish them. So it depends on whether you, you know, if you mind the dark color like that, you can do them a little bit lighter golden 
and then we'll put them in the oven to finish off. So the guys are in the background enjoying a snack and I am here having finished my snack already and I'm frying more potato chips and I just wanted to mention a couple of things. I don't rinse the sliced potatoes or soak them in cold water or put lemon juice on them or salt or anything like that. Um, I just slice them and fry them in the way that they are. I haven't noticed any difference <clears throat> when I have done that in the past, um, soaking or you know anything like that. So just slice them, throw them in the oil and they're good to go. So this is five pounds of potatoes turned into uh, potato chips. It's probably the equivalent of about five bags of potato chips. And I am frying the ne next batch behind me, the next five pounds. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the paper towels off of the tray and go ahead and put these in the oven at 200 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm gonna show you why. So you can see these potato chips, they all look really nice in color but some of them are just not done all the way. And so like this one right here, this one's real soft in the middle. And that's because I didn't fry them until they were really, really dark. Some of them got really, really dark and they're super crispy and that's fine. But um, I didn't want them all that dark. Um, I didn't want any of them that dark, but some of them just did get that dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven, let them crisp up the rest of the way, and then we can cool them down and season them and put them into bags. So um, what I always recommend is fry them to the color that you like and then finish them off in the oven. Um, so these potato chips just came out of the oven at two, 200 for 20 minutes. And um, I had a couple of the ones that were not very crisp on the top so that I could check them. And they're closer, but they're not all the way done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in for like another 15 minutes, I think, and check them again. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. My son is playing Mario Kart in the background, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, it is seven o'clock. I've been frying potatoes, potato chips for about six hours, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop for the night, but I didn't get through everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lid on the coconut oil, just let it solidify overnight, um, and then uh, I'll rewarm it in the morning, so it's just gonna stay out at room temperature, not a big deal. Then I have these extra potatoes here, and I talked about not soaking them in water or lemon juice or anything like that, and that's just for like normal um, frying. So what I'm gonna do though overnight is I am gonna put them in filtered water, I'm just gonna fill this pan with filtered water until all the potatoes are covered. Pop it in the fridge, and then tomorrow I'll drain them for a couple of hours, pat them dry, and then just keep on going. Okay, day two of potato chips. I have the potatoes that I put in the fridge last night covered in water draining, and I have the coconut oil back on the stove top, and it's gonna be heating up. So in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and make our barbecue seasoning, because I made uh, the equivalent of about 10 bags of potato chips last night, or yesterday, as plain potato chips, and then today, the ones that we make are gonna be turned into barbecue chips. So let's make that seasoning. So of course, this can be customized to whatever you want it to be as far as the proportions, um, but I'm gonna show you the ratio that we use, and it's just a nice classic barbecue potato chip. If you got a late July bag of barbecue chips, it's gonna be a similar taste. Um, so what we're gonna use is organic brown sugar. We have garlic, onion powder, chili powder, and smoked paprika, which you can use regular paprika, but we do like the smoked flavor best. And then we're gonna just take all of those and mix them together in a bowl until it's very, very fine. And I usually just use a whisk for that. If you find that you have a lot of clumps, go ahead and put it through a mesh strainer, um, just like you would sift it to get all the clumps out of it. I also forgot that we're adding salt and white sugar to the mix as well. I haven't looked at the recipe in a while, so I had to pull it out to make sure I was remembering everything. And so white sugar and salt are going in there as well. Um, I love the molasses flavor of the brown sugar, but it doesn't stick as well to the potato chips 
<clears throat> as the white sugar does. And so you end up getting more of like a paprika powdery coat with the just brown sugar than with the white. So add the white in there um, if you want some extra sweetness. And here it is with the white sugar and a little bit of salt in there. So good. All right, so we have our barbecue seasoning. The oil is almost ready to fry the next batch of potatoes. I am gonna have to pat them dry because um, while the outer layer of the pile uh, drained, the inner parts haven't, and we don't wanna put water into the oil. So I'm gonna have to pat those dry a little bit. And if you make a lot of seasoning, even if you're only making a little bit of barbecue chips, like if you're only frying a pound of um, potatoes or something like that, anything that's left over, you can just keep in a bag. And whenever you want to make more, more barbecue chips, you'll already have the seasoning. Um, the other thing to note is that I turn way more of our potatoes into plain potato chips than barbecue chips because you can always heat the plain potato chips up in the oven and then toss them in barbecue seasoning and turn them into barbecue chips. So um, that's really, really easy to do even if you make them as plain. So you don't have to decide right now how many you want of plain versus barbecue. You can always do that later on. So let's fry up the rest of our potatoes. Okay, we are almost done. We have all of our barbecue chips out of the oven. So they're still warm from the oven. And um, I'm gonna put the seasoning that we made earlier into a gallon Ziploc bag. You can do the seasoning in a bowl, but a bag works better, more even coating. So I'm gonna put about a cup of the seasoning in here, and then I'm gonna put the warm chips in, and we'll get it all mixed up. So that's about half of the um, seasoning, and we're gonna put a bunch of chips in there, probably about half the bag, because you still want a good about amount of air in the bag so you can really mix it up. Okay, and we're gonna keep as much air in there as possible. Seal this up, and then we're just gonna gently turn it. It doesn't take much, and these are completely coated. So here's the plain chip, and here's the barbecue chip, so. So once you get these all coated, um, you just take them out, kind of shake the extra dust to the bottom, and um, kind of take them out from the top, shaking the extra powder loose. And then you'll just keep doing that until all of your chips are gone that you're gonna turn into barbecue chips. If you have extras left over, just keep it in a glass jar or even a plastic bag, but I prefer glass so you don't have any outgassing or potential uh, contamination from things that might be around it. Um, and you can just turn any of your plain potato chips into barbecue chips at a moment's notice, super easy. And now all we have left to do is put them into Mylar bags with some silica packs and they will be shelf stable for really up to two years. Um, we found a bag of these potato chips that I made in 2020 in the back of our pantry in our tiny house when we moved about two months ago, and they were perfect. They were totally fine. Um, not a problem at all. So these will last at least up to two years. That's how long we've been able to keep them uh, without eating them. So I would say two years is fine. If you wanted to say a year, that would be fine too. Um, so let's get them stored. All right, so time to bag them. I have these gallon Mylar bags and we're gonna use them along with some silica packs that I got on Amazon. I'll put the link below, so be sure to grab some of those. These are food safe and really cheap, so definitely worth buying. Uh, one little note about the silica packs, after you use them for potato chips, they will be pretty greasy. And so I tend to just throw them out because they are relatively cheap and I would rather just have new ones. But if you're just gonna use them again for more potato chips, you can put them in the oven, dry them out according to the directions on the packaging, and then use them again, that's up to you. Um, but they will get greasy, so just be aware of that when they come out. So, all we're gonna do is open this bag. And um, I'll put the amount of silica, like the grams, in the video description. I'm not, I don't remember how much these are. Um, like grams, and so I'm just gonna put three in the bottom. I usually have a bigger pack that's all in one, but I got these smaller ones, and so it needs three. And then I'm um, just fill them up with chips to the point where you can close it without crushing the bag, and um, that's it. So that's all you're gonna do. We ended up getting, um, so you can see how full these are. We ended up getting uh, seven of these of regular potato chips, and then another. Th we'll have another three of barbecue chips, and each one of these is equivalent to two of these late July bags, 
um, this isn't very full and this one is very full. And so um, we ended up with 20, the equivalent of 20 bags worth of potato chips. And that ended up being um, 20 pounds, uh, maybe 25, we lost count there, um, of potatoes. And then I, I was like, that's enough potato chips. That's gonna be more than enough for a year. So I decided to turn the rest of those uh, 50 pounds of potatoes into uh, mashed potatoes because we do consume those a lot more frequently than we do chips. Um, so, but this is at least a year supply of chips for us, if not two years. And then I'll turn the rest into mashed potatoes and canned potatoes, which I'll also share with you in a future video. Be sure to label your bags. I'm getting ready to grab a Sharpie and write barbecue chips on this because you don't want to be opening your chip bags over and over again to find the right ones. It'll just introduce moisture and oxygen and it will ruin the longevity of your chips. So just go ahead and grab a Sharpie, write barbecue chips on one. Um, I would go ahead and write plain chips on the other, like potato chips on the other, um, because if you're anything like me, you have a lot of these around. Um, I use this for my freeze dried goods, I use this for dehydrated goods, I use these for rice and all sorts of stuff. Um, so be sure to label the contents of your bag so that you don't have to unnecessarily open them uh, to find what you're looking for. Barbecue seasoning labeled and ready to go in the spice drawer. And then the last thing that we're going to do is save the oil. Um, if you used coconut oil, really any oil, but especially coconut oil or palm oil because it's expensive, you can actually reuse it. So what I'm going to do is pour it back into the container that I got it out of through a strainer. Um, so I've let it cool a little bit. It's, you know, it's still liquid, um, but it's not boiling hot anymore. There's actually quite a lot of it left. I'm gonna pour it through this little tea strainer that I have. And then I wouldn't use this for baking or like oil pulling or anything like that, but you could use it again for frying. Um, you might keep the lid kind of loose. Nah, it's not too warm. If it's too warm, keep the lid kind of loose until it cools so that it doesn't expand. Um, and you can see we used about, let me find the edge used about maybe a little less than half or a little more than half rather there's a little less than half left over which is amazing we did 25 pounds of potato chips and we still had plenty of leftover coconut oil so i uh, love this method i hope you do too i hope you get to try it soon uh, leave a comment um, go ahead and like this video if you would and please um, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already you can do that right here just click that little button and um, it'll let you subscribe and then we also have a bunch of other really cool videos here for you to watch next. Um, and I hope you enjoy. And I'm going to show you a quick shot of all the potato chip bags that we got. See you next time.